write the relationship between the variables using k as the constant of variation. Hmm. Okay, so it says, um, we're going to do this two ways, okay? So firstly, let's have a look at 1a, and there are two variables, what are they? K. No, 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 have a look. A and R. A and R. So I'm just going to write A and R. These guys are, hold on, let me have a look at them. Okay, these guys are not proportional to each other, because look again at the question, it's actually not R, read it again. The square it's the, the square radius. of the radius. It's the square of those. So what I have to write is R squared. Okay. So I can say A is proportional to R squared. But we actually know, we have a formula for the area of a circle, right? What's the formula? What is it actually equal to? Pi R squared. It's pi R squared and pi is that constant. Pi is a number 3.1415, etc. And it never changes, yeah? Unlike these guys, the whole point is you have big circles and small circles. You can change the radius to be whatever you want. Pi never changes. So this is the formula for the area of a circle, unless you eat it, of course. Um, but they've asked us, look at the question, it says, um, use k as the constant of variation, okay? So the particular k, we, we actually know this formula, but this is a more general way to say it, okay? Um, k, for now, in this particular context, is pi. But if I didn't know what that was, like once upon a time, people didn't have a label for that, so they're like, I don't know, it's some constant, don't know what it is. Okay. Please note, might be worth writing down with some other color if you've got one. This is the constant of variation. So in a way, it controls how fast or slow the variation is happening. Um, not to be confused with new color. These guys are and a, and they are actually variables. So the phrase constant of variation is kind of a, it sounds like an oxymoron. It's like, it's constant, but it's about change. Um, but the number itself doesn't change. It's these guys that change a and r. Okay. Can you tell me how to do b? We can do it just like this. We can do it just like this. Hmm. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to start with is V. I'm going to write my proportionality symbol, like so. What's it proportional to? Yeah, the cube of the radius. Okay. Now, um, again, on the reference sheet, because we do spherical geometry, we actually know what the volume is equal to, right? Um, does anyone remember? I don't know, don't consult it, because I do, but I'm just asking if you guys remember. Do you remember? It's in the book. It's in the book. It's four thirds pi r cubed, okay? So just like pi is a constant, what color was I using for constants? Um, four thirds pi also a constant. So therefore, um, in terms of what they've asked us to do, we would just say V is K, there's the constant. Cubed. Make sense? So, yeah, there. Okay, so um, if, you, if you didn't know the formula, you would just write that. Yeah. I'm actually writing the formula just to illustrate for you, like, what is the purpose of K? Yeah. Well, it's, it's how much does it get bigger by, and we actually know how, what it is in a lot of contexts, okay? All right, well, the last one there is C. And this one is actually very similar to the one I started with Akil's funny example, uh, part C. <laughs> That's a great example. Um, what are the two letters? What are the two things? D and L. D and L. But it's not just any L. It's the square root of L. So it's like this, and then there's the proportion symbol, like that. So what's the equation? This is actually uh, exactly, Renee, what you were talking about before. I don't know what the number is out the front. A fifth, 80, whatever. Yeah. So all I do is I just put in K. Yeah. It is all OK. So, and I should point out, I should point out, this actually, like not knowing what K is, is usually our starting point. That's usually where we begin, and then um, we find out, like we record some data, we do an experiment, we find out a certain value of D that matches with a certain value of L. So I'll just give an example. 
What would you like DNO to stand for? Just make something up. It has to be something that can change. I'm going to call it length. Length of. How about the diameter? Of, how about the diameter of your? Did you say longness? <laughs> how about the diameter of your arm versus the length of your arm? Okay, I'm just making something up. Okay, so then we may actually measure. Okay, what, what does the diameter of your arm look like? I don't know. Maybe like, not the diameter of my arm. Um, uh, well, both. <laughs> um, can we go for like? Um, let's just say like. Four centimeters. Can we just make up a number? Yeah. Diameter is four. Uh, well, yeah, up here. Like, yeah. it's not my wrist. Okay. Anyway, um, I don't know what k is. Okay. What would you estimate the length of your? Um, let's just go your forearm. What's the length? It's about thirty centimeters, right? So I don't know. I'm just looking. Just. Le okay, all right. We'll go with we'll go with the diameter of my arm and the um and the length of yours. That will give us some great data, guys. Okay, so let's go with twenty. All right. Now, in this case, having taken these two measurements, now I can work out what k is equal to. Right. Um, what would I do to solve for k? Have a look. Have a look at the board. If I wanted to solve for k, I want k on its own. Right? Okay, now hold on a second. If I squared, I would get rid of this square root, but do I need to? No. Like, the square root applies just to the 20. It doesn't apply to the k. That's why it comes after, not before. So all I need, yeah. I just need to divide by this thing, get it out of the way, right? So I'm going to go up here. k is going to be 4 divided by the square root of 20. Okay? Um, do you guys have calculators there? Can you give me to one decimal point? Wicked, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, I got to play with this forbidden toy. How many decimal one or do? Zero point nine. Uh, okay, give me two. <laughs> Zero point eight nine. Eight nine. Okay. All right, so now what I did was, um, I'll actually highlight these, right? The first thing I did was I created the variation equation. Okay, I created the variation equation. And then secondly, I put some values into it. Um, usually that will come from the question. Where does the question get it from? Well, it measured something, right? And it found out, oh, this is a pair of values that goes together. The third thing is I then used that measurement, measurements, um, to find out what k is equal to. And the last thing is I can now update my original equation. I have an idea of what k is. So I will say that d is 0 0.89 times the square root of l. So now I have a proper variation equation. This one is like a variation equation with some question marks in it. Uh, I don't know what k is. But you use the information at your disposal, like what, whatever the question provides, to find out what it is, okay?